Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for being with us again. Welcome to another episode of Doctors Go Live on Columbia Asia Facebook. So today we will be talking about neck pain or rather how to cope with neck pain and we've got an expert to address that. And his name is Chandra Segar Gobi, or we can call him Segar. He was the handsome guy whom you saw earlier in the uh, short skit earlier. So, you know, since we've got a bit of a, a new concept for Facebook Live, so you can actually um, imagine the the place that he works. We can we can see just now that was the physiotherapy uh, studio at Columbia Asia Hospital, Hospital Stapa, where he works as a physiotherapist. Okay, hi Segar, how are you? Hello. Hi, ma'am. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Thanks. Uh, so it, it's good to see you again. It's been a while since we had you on Facebook Live talking about back pain the last time. So today we're going to be talking about neck pain. Okay, Sega, maybe you can, um, you can, maybe we can just chat for a while. Uh, like, you know, how long have you been a physiotherapist with Columbia Asia Hospital stuff? Oh, um, I've been a uh, physiotherapist for more than 10 years. Uh, I've been working in Columbia almost like three years plus. Oh, I see. I see. What What do you like about it? Why did you choose to become a physiotherapist? Why? Uh, because I love to care for people and uh, I like to help actually. That's good. <laughs> it was your choice to become a physiotherapist? Absolutely. It's my choice. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Okay. All right. So um, for today's topic, it's regarding neck pain. Maybe you can let us know uh, why you particularly chose this topic because I know physiotherapy, there's a lot of of angles, but why did you particularly choose this area to talk about? Oh yeah, Madam Shakina, very recently we all know we are actually down with this pandemic and a mm -hmm. lot of people lost job and many of them are actually working from home. Yeah. So um, I noticed that number of cases which comes to my department for our expertise, I noticed most of them they have neck pain. So it's mm -hmm. very much related to neck and back. Yeah. So then uh, I realized also uh, it could be because of their posture at home where they don't have a proper table and chair. Yes, I okay. Yeah. I was wondering why, it, because I, I know that you mentioned um, when you work from home, so you are more inclined to get neck pain. And I was wondering, you know, because people still work in the office and they also uh, look at their computer, so chances are they'll also be sitting. But I forgot that part. What you mentioned just now is correct. It's about the chair, because chairs at the office, Chances are these are chairs that are specially designed for you to sit uh, for, for an extended amount of time looking at your computer while you work. Well, the chairs that we have at home, it very well can be just an ordinary chair that may not support your, your neck properly. So thank you so much for suggesting this um, neck pain topic. So, you know, uh, it, it's very timely. It's very timely. Okay, uh, Sega, I, I panggil Sega tak apa eh? Yes, Sega, yes, Sega. <laughs> okay, so um, about neck pain, when you have your patients coming to see you, what is their common complaint about neck pain? I mean, at which part and, and maybe you can explain to us why that particular part. Are there any common area ta, that you find oh, no. people keep coming back to you and, and telling you the same thing about, about this neck pain? Which area? Yes, madam. Uh, very common very common trend which I see in my cases mm -hmm. mainly they will have exact spot which is around the trapezius so trapezius well, wait, wait. upper trapezius it's a diamond diamond shaped muscle it's a very large muscle which holds the whole back of you from the neck up to the half of your a thoracic and then it holds the neck in position to keep it straight upright of course there are certain uh, some other group of muscle which is surrounding which also contributes to hold the alignment but uh, this trapezius is mainly can be easily affected 
especially when a person does not uh, sit in a proper posture alignment. So trapezius is this big muscle. Okay, viewers, kindly use your both hands and then just hold here. This particular big chunk of muscle is actually your trapezius. This is upper trap. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Ah, so this one will be very tense. Right. And when you touch, it will be like a rock hard, most of the cases. And then yeah. when you ask their history, they will say it's like they have to like sit for very long and then they are not aware of their posture. So these are the common uh, complaints a uh, patient will make. And plus the pain at, will be very intense exactly at the point of the back of your neck. In because, the middle? Ah, in the middle. Because your muscle will be like pulled. So the tension will yeah. be more there. Yeah. It's all because more to postural. In some cases, they they have some neurological problem that could be some internal problem, uh, but mainly I've seen like they have more on the on the muscle musculature problems compared to neurological. Muscular. Yeah, I see. But you know, like when you are walking, you are also holding up your you know your shoulders upright and your neck will also be supported. So what's the difference between how come when you are sitting down it causes more pain to your neck than when you are moving about? Yes, that's a very, very good question you ask. It's all because of the modern world. We are holding gadgets with us. We ah, even go to PC yes. like for eight hours, but mm. there is one small PC in our hand, which is our phone. <laughs> Initially, yes. we'll be holding it upright, and then gradually it will go down, and then slowly right. it stoop forward, and right, that's yeah. where the building of the tension occurs. Ah, yes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because I've read before that it's recommended to look at your phone like that but who actually does that man? nobody <laughs> uh, uses their instagram or facebook like that they always have to look down so that, that's another cause as well very good point yeah so uh okay next one uh Sega, apart from um position or posture are there any other factors that contribute to neck pain perhaps the way they uh they move i mean that's posture but maybe um the gerakkan can maybe when they reach out for something you know um maybe when they they swim i don't know like, about any kind of of movement that they could be doing better but they're not do you know what i mean like uh, any, any any um any complaints from your patients regarding this yeah so uh since the discussion is about neck pain it is a mm. very elaborate kind of uh, topic Yes. But if you narrow down that, uh, we are focusing on uh, on pain. That's the main point. And then it's right. neck, then pain. So um, even if a person met an accident, if he, mm. he or she had a whiplash, and yes. that will also cause a tense at the neck. So he also will come in the category of neck pain. And then... Wait, wait. Uh, what's a whiplash? Can you explain a whiplash? Whiplash means you're driving car or mm. riding motorbike. And now all of a sudden you break, you made an accident. So helmet weight and then the head weight go forward and then bounce back. And that works. So okay. that will cause tension at the same point around that area because it is like, uh, you know, the, the momentum of it, it will cause tension. Yeah, like, fine, like that. Yeah. Muscle. yeah, yeah. So, so that's also know, yes, a neck. cause of neck pain. Ah, that is also another cause of neck, neck pain. Okay. Number two is, of course, uh, working habit. Mm -hmm. Number three, ergonomic uh, settings in the house, uh, like okay. your or your washing basin, and then your table, a dining table, it's too low, and then you have to like bend a lot. Ah, oh, I see. So it's not just the chair, lah. There, there's other thing as well. Yeah, the furnitures in the house also another contributor to this. And plus, now, like I told you, the gadgets uh, in the modern world, yeah. Yeah, you're saying the wash basin, you mean because of the the length, the height of the wash basin? Yeah, each and every one of us, we have a different height. So when it comes to like ergonomic furnitures, even like simple ADL, normal activities you do in the house, you must have a proper height. So let's mm. say a person is too tall and then they mm. the, ergo, uh, the, washing, uh, the washing basin is too low, oh. that mm. will actually make them to slouch forward. And then for a longer right. hour, that will also cause pain. But if the person right. is too small, short, to mid, it's fine. Uh, somehow it won't cause. But a tall person, they always encounter this problem. They're very yeah. unfriendly. What would, what would be your advice? Okay, <laughs> If someone is short and they want to reach the wash basin, that's high. So that's quite straightforward. Like you can just put a stool or something they can step on, right? 
But what Man. if this person is tall and how how would he have to handle, you know, using a low wash basin so that they tak sakit <laughs> neck? Ah, they have to redo the wash basin. <laughs> Nothing much they okay, can good do. Idea. <laughs> Renovation. Renovation. Renovation of bathroom or kitchen, remember that. <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, maybe, yeah, this is something that they just have to. Yeah. Just uh, crouch or something. Okay, so let's go now to, um, this is your expertise, lah, the tips and advice that you can share with us for anyone who is experiencing neck pain. And I understand that you've got your colleague, your um, assistant physiotherapist, means Vicky, right? Yeah. Okay, so Vicky is going to show us uh, what are the movements that can be taken in order for people to cope with their neck pain. Okay, silakan, Mr. Sega. Okay. Thank you very much. I would like to call my dear colleague, uh, Vicky, to demonstrate some things. <laughs> okay. Hi, hello everyone. Hi, Vicky. Thank you so much for volunteering. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. <laughs> We need to do some adjustment. Sorry. Okay, okay. No problem. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah, now, okay. in a very common uh, issue, you will mm -hmm. see people who are desk bound, they tend to have round shoulder. Okay, Vicky, can I touch you? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Can I? Okay. So, I've taken her permission. She granted me to touch her. Okay. okay. All right. Now, Vicky, uh, slouch a bit. Okay. This is how. Mm. Okay. This is how. A very common uh, desk bound people will have the spine. Mm -hmm. They will actually, rounded shoulder will be there, and then the neck will be stooped forward, and then chin is way protruded forward. Yeah. And then eventually, when this happens, even the bottom part of the spine also will be affected. So now we need to correct all this. This is postural correction. So, very yeah. commonly, as I told you, madam. Posture correction is the main reason why people will have neck pain. Mm -hmm. And then the second reason could be some neurological condition, which we are not going to talk about it. This is more to neck pain management at home. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I'm going to show you. So mm -hmm. this is the abnormal way of keeping your spine uh, alignment. So okay. she to correct this. So to correct viewers, you have to round back your shoulder. Okay. Can you see the amount of movement she did? Yeah. So now she is in a very. Well, uh, yeah, I'm also going to do the same thing. Okay, all right. So okay, you, you can even do that. So it is like roll your shoulder, open up your chest. So when you do okay. that, roll. Everything will be well alive. Roll your shoulder and then open up. So this is number one correction. Number two correction mm -hmm. is the chin. So now mm -hmm. because of um, COVID, we have to use mask. Otherwise, you can see the chin. The chin is here, it is quite far away from the body alignment. So now you got to correct this, tuck it in the beam. Yeah, so this is how everyone must practice, must be aware of your posture. So when you're aware of the posture, to sit like this, eventually it become a habit. Otherwise, you will never uh, able to uh, enhance this. Okay, now this is one. Okay, so this is posture correction. So, Madam Sakina, there is something we call as uh, cross syndrome, where you have, uh, can you roll back? So, this is the roll back, uh, okay. Now, when the posture is like this, you have a lot of pulling on this muscle, the yeah. upper trap and the back of it, rhomboids and all that. And then on the front part, the pectoralis minor and major is also involved, where there will be a lot of tightening. Oh, those are pec muscles, the front muscle. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So see, there's a lot of tightening in the front muscle mm -hmm. and then a lot of lengthening on the back muscle. Mm -hmm. So when the posture is like this, a lot of shortening and lengthening happens. So we need to correct this by doing rounding the shoulder, round the okay. shoulder, tighten up. Okay. Then, okay. okay. Now she's opening up the front muscle and then back is also shortened a little bit so that it will be in well aligned manner and then she has a tuck the chin in. So, people, those who are listening, kindly practice this. You must practice this. It's not kindly. You've got to practice this. Otherwise, okay. you're going to cut a lot on the neck. Okay? So, this is number one point which I really wanted to share with you. Posture correction. Okay. Uh, Sika, 
uh, yeah. sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Okay, this is also depending on um, your eye line, your eye level with your laptop, yeah. right? Because if it is like this and you've got everything correct, but your laptop is too low and then you'll be looking down, chances are in a few minutes time, you'll be doing that again because your, your eye level is down there. I agree, madam. Absolutely, it's correct. Because uh, eye level, that's that's the context of ergonomic. You must have a proper mm. height of table, or even if you don't have proper height of table, you must have a good chair so that you can recline and decline the table on mm. uh, the chair so that you can okay. adjust according to the height. So that you what? the eye <laughs> level. I just adjusted my chair. <laughs> nah, nah, what is enforcement? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, then I, I fix that a laptop 90 degree and then you adjust the chair. So your knee also has to be 90 degrees so that it doesn't obstruct the circulation. So yeah. prolonged sitting, you don't want any DVT to occur. Correct. Yeah. thrombosis. Agree? So we don't want any yeah. varicose vein to form. So circulation okay. must be maintained at the same time you do your work. So that is right. how the whole idea is about. So for posture correction, I have one exercise which is very, very simple and easy. Anyone can do it. Okay. No issue, there's no limitation and so on. Anyone can do it. Okay. So now I'd like to ask Vicky to stand up for a while. You need to find a wall in your house. <laughs> okay. Right? Make sure you push yourself against the wall. The whole body must be against the wall. Legs slightly apart. Okay. Then hands up. Both arms. Both arms. If the elbow doesn't touch, it's fine. But two point fingers and the knuckles. Knuckles must touch each other. So bring it up mm. and bring it down. Oh, you have to point your fingers and go yes. up. Yes, mm. each of the fingers must touch each other. So okay. that's how it goes. So you can do this actually 10 reps, 10 repetitions, and then do it into two sets, 10 and 10. So what this happens now? What's happening now? This helps your muscles? Ah, this is for the trapezius, the front. Ah, muscle. okay, okay. Right, this right. Is to align back your posterior mm -hmm. muscles. Your yeah, this muscles. part, la, the one that you said feels very tense. Kan? Yes. So okay. up and down. So this is how you do. You don't do repeat very fast, but do it uh, very gracefully. Alright? Okay. So Vicky is doing this perfectly. Yeah. Since Vicky has no tightness, she can actually touch the wall. But oh. most of them, they cannot touch because of a lot of tightness. Okay? Thank you, Vicky. Okay, now, that is very simple exercise for you to do at home. Then, so 10 and 10. 10 times and then wait for a while and do another 10 times. Yes, do not pause. Take break as much as you want, one minute or two minutes up to you. Preferably 30 seconds is fine. And then you got to do that. All right? Okay. That is and ideally, you should be able, your two uh, pointed fingers should be able to touch each other. Ah, ideally, they, like, you're not touch each other. Yes. Okay. Got it. All right. It's a very simple thing to everyone to practice. Okay, now okay. back to pain. Uh, can I go to the pain management or do you yes, like yes, yes, please do, please do. Okay, so when it comes to like uh, pain, okay, now this is the muscle which I told you, it's a diamond shaped muscle, it's a very big muscle, okay. okay. So, we must before you all uh, do all this exercise, mm -hmm. there is a request from me actually, please go in front of your mirror, take a picture of yourself, front back, from the back and the side. You must ask someone to do that. Then you evaluate yourself, see how you stand. It is very important because self-awareness is something you have to do it, not others have to impose on you. So self-awareness, right. yeah. So when you have the first picture of you in three angles, front, back and the side, then you do evaluation, know yourself how you stand. If you notice any abnormalities in standing, especially bending too much, rounding up too much, shoulders, then not well aligned and all that, please take note, write it down and then take note. After the exercise, about 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 a month, something, mm -hmm. then you can see the progress. Take another picture and then you see yourself. 
So this will actually help you to do an evaluation by yourself. Right. Okay. Okay. So now this particular muscle is this is the muscle which I told you is a trapezius muscle, very big. Very commonly, people will have pain at this point here and the upper trap on this region. So if you find it, it's very tense, then it's high time for you to do your stretching. So stretching is uncostly exercise for you to do actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. can do it, okay? But if you are you've been diagnosed for any yes. other neurological condition, cervical PID, spondylosis, mm -hmm. uh, spondylosis, anything to do with neurological, kindly, kindly do not do the stretching. You must consult your physiotherapist and then your orthopedician because certain movements when you do the stretching, it will cause the nerve to impinge more. And you will have more radiating. So we don't want that things to happen to you. Okay. okay. All right. So today we're just talking about regular neck pain. Yeah, nothing to do with, with diseases. Lah. That one you need to go and talk to your Absolutely. personal doctor. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So this is I'm talking, whatever I'm claiming now is solely pain. If you've been diagnosed, kindly do not practice this. Mm -hmm. Consult your physiotherapist or your orthopedician. Okay. okay. All right. So then I'm going to teach you the first stretching exercise. Very simple. By nature, we human, we have three planes. Front plane, side plane, and we have this plane. So these are the movements which happens in the neck region. Okay. Okay. Frontal, coronal, and cordial. Now, when you do neck movement, we have six major, uh, very major movement which is forward flexion, or I would say in very later, look forward, bend forward, okay? One. Okay. Number two, backward. Look two. Forward, backwards, okay. And also known as extension of neck. Right. And then we have tilt, or sideway movement. One. Tilt. Mm. tilt. And the other side. I hope you could be yeah. your image. <laughs> <laughs> then you have rotation movement. Okay, got it. All right. Yes. So these are the six movement which permittable in our cervical region. Mm -hmm. This is cervical. Okay. Now, uh, there is another movement also. It is this way. It is more like you're smelling your armpit. Yeah, it's like smelling your Easy to remember. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. okay. So okay. Right. these are the actions of muscle which I'm going to teach you to stretch. It's a yeah. very basic video with me, and then please do it properly. For me, quantity doesn't count, quality counts. Do it properly, okay? Correct. So, whatever I'm doing, you've got to do it 10 times. 10 times, remember, 10 times. And then you must hold it for 10 counts. 10 times, 10 counts. Initially, you must do 3 times. Then, after that, you can go to up to 10 reps. So, uh, three times and then ten counts. So, I'll show you now. We're going to do this one. Okay, Vicky, look down. So, now Vicky is looking down. She's gazing down. So, when she does right. this, when she does this, people with neck pain, they can't even do this because it is very intense. But Vicky, slowly she's fine. So, she can do it easily. So, my word to you, do not use any force like taking hand, putting here, giving a pause, all this don't do yet. Yeah. As so much you just, as you can. Uh, okay, uh, all right. Do, do the action so that awesome. the muscle will lengthen slowly. Okay? Okay, drop. Okay. okay. Now we're going to start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten. Ten. Like okay? Yes. So you can go to up to three times because very initial. Then later you're good ready, then you can go up to ten times. Okay? That's how you do for the one first one action. Second action is facing up or extending your neck at the back. Mm, so when okay. you does that, we are stretching the front muscles here. Previously stretching the back muscle, now front yeah. neck muscle. Front muscles. So, ten seconds also, lah. Yes, ten also. Oh. Okay, next. Look straight. Done 10, then Vicky has to do a side flexion, which is also side tilt. Okay, drop Vicky. Now Vicky is dropping, 
make sure when you do this viewer your spine must be straight you are seated in a proper chair okay you okay. don't want any slouching movement of other muscles it's only the neck has to work so you when you cannot be standing right when you do this no she is seated i am standing oh you must be seated no this i mean if you want to do this exercise can you be standing or you must be seated ah uh, you can even do in standing seated will be easier okay if you are at the office la and doing uh, work yeah. while okay exercise right, right got it so when we keep till this one you can see a major tens in this muscle so this is the particular muscle we are stretching so this yeah. is what i'm pushing you all now so we going to stretch and the hand some people they will watch youtube and all that and then they tend to do wrong things also because they are not consulting the expert yes, person yeah. professional so my word uh, everyone do not youtube and then you try to educate yourself it's not going to help you you need a consult you need to consult a person a professional okay. so now on that note on that note i would just like to uh, remind the viewers ladies and gentlemen if you've got any questions for um, mr sega you can just type your questions in the comment box and then later mr sega will address those questions okay so now we pick is already stretching quite long okay ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vicky's uh, hand supposed to be straight down. Do not hold the chair. Don't pack your hand under right. your body. Yeah. Okay, these these are the common things. And then another one technique they'll put at the back and then they stretch. Mm -hmm. That will never help you to stretch properly because your hand is already internally rotated. So it's not going to focus on that particular mu right. muscle. We can try later. Okay? okay. So hang your hand down and then do the stretch. The formula, as I told you, ten counts. Ten times. Ten times. Repetitions. Three reps. Okay. Okay. Then once it's done here, then we can slowly will bring it back to the neutral position. Mm -hmm. Then we drop it to the one side, and then goes to the other side. So. Many many people will ask, Sigar, am I supposed to do alternate or one side? Mm. It's up to you. But I will suggest do alternate. It's easier. Otherwise, you don't feel the the tinge of it doing the thing. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now Vicky is doing ten counts. Make sure you align properly and then you drop properly, like Vicky. Okay. Do not turn and then drop. That's wrong. Our target muscle is your upper trap. All right. Okay. Done. So Vicky is done with ten counts. Next. So as I told you, forward bending, backward, and then sideways, sideways done. Next, we have rotation. So rotation movement, you just have to turn, turn like burung hantu like that, <laughs> like owl, huh? Okay, then rotate. Uh, and then, all right. Okay. Make sure you That's try. Right. Ah, yeah. Try to bring your chin towards your shoulder, but don't bring your shoulder to it towards your chin. It's wrong. Oh, okay, okay. Like bring the chin. Shoulder. Many people are trying to bring the shoulder towards the chin. <laughs> that is not the chin. Yeah. That means, Ega, you're not only just looking to the left or the right, like you're actually looking down towards your shoulder when you do that. Ah, uh, the it's not just matter turning left, turning right, but you actually have to look down like that. Ah, uh, we have to rotate, but not look, not gazing down. If the eye must be straight and then go straight. It's a rotation. Yeah. So like, but you say the chin must be towards the shoulders. Yeah, the chin gradually go towards the shoulder. Uh, Your neck. Right. Ah, yes, yes, like that. Okay. okay. Now ten counts done. Okay. Now she going to repeat on the left. Okay. Yeah, can you see? it's very clean. So the muscles are all popping out already. You can mm -hmm. see. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now face straight. Ten done. Okay. Then the final another two is a caption where. She has to gaze at the armpit, so you see downwards. Mm. All right, I see. And then look down. Like, you know, like 45 degrees, lah. Yeah, this will help to stretch this muscle on the lateral muscles. Okay. 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 Then right. Come up right. and this side. Then okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There goes the stretching. This is the very basic stretching where everyone yeah. can practice at home. And yeah, very, and it's very convenient because you can do it while you are actually sitting down. I mean, if you're at the office and you don't want to stand up, you can do this while you're sitting. That you're sitting down. Yeah, I agree. It's very easy. You don't need a specific location to do all this. You can do it anywhere. Yeah, convenient. Okay, that's very easy. Yeah. So left, right, from the and then around, rotate, 
and then diagonal. Okay, got it. All right. Then there is one last one which I have to include, must include. That is actually chin tuck. For that, I need viewer's permission so that Vicky has to take out a mask and mm. so that she can show what she's doing. Otherwise, it's not visible at all. Okay, please okay. give me the permission. As long as you keep your mask on. Lah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in seated, okay, Vicky has to tuck her chin. Now, can you see Vicky's chin now? All right, okay. What? Now, Vicky has to tuck it inside. One. Right. So when you do that, you will form a double chin. Do you feel it? Okay. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. hold it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this will help to correct the neck posture. Mm -hmm. Chin tuck. You should call it chin tuck. Okay. Then count. For how long until ten also? Okay. Ah, uh, you can do three first. Initial. After that, gradually increase your repetition. Mm -hmm. For how long should you be doing this if you've got neck pain? Ah, uh, neck pain. Initially, after your, if you find that you your neck is very tense, then immediately <coughs> you need to give hot pack. Actually, I haven't come to that yet because. Yeah. No, uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Sorry, no. Uh, what I mean is, if you be, uh, if you do these exercises, do you have to do it every day, or maybe just after your neck pain uh, has has improved, then you can stop doing it for okay. a week, two weeks. This is how often, how often? Yeah, how often should you do this? This one, if you have neck pain, you can do two times in a day. Two okay. times in a day is fine, but you must follow up with your hot pack and all that, and then. If for a general uh, stretching, this is also applicable. Meaning, you can do it like a like daily routine. You just start your day with stretching. Yeah, yeah. Upper limb, upper limb stretching, lower limb stretching. So, and include this muscle stretching. This is yeah. basically a simple stretch. Okay, okay. Which you yeah. can also do as an exercise after when you cool down, when you work out. That's some of neck exercises as well. Correct, ma'am. Yes. Whenever after you watch a movie very long also, you can just stretch before and after. So there's no harm in that. Yeah, I think a lot of us can relate to that. <laughs> that's our ADL, daily activities. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, madam. So now um you guys tuck chin is done. So now you everyone would have give I uh, would have have some ideas on what you're supposed to do and how yeah. to do it. Okay, now there are a few things we would like to add through my experience. This is okay. more like uh, uh, some takeaway from you all. Okay, um, there, are, there is something we call as ice bag and hot bag. Yes. Okay, you can buy these in pharmacy, you can buy nowadays through Shopee also. You can even come to our hospital and buy also, not a big deal. So, okay. you can actually get this and then pour water. When you pour water, you must give hot bag. You must pour hot water. So when you pour hot water, it has to be within 60 degrees Celsius. It cannot be more than that. It can burn your skin. So okay, but how would we know that it is at the correct uh, Celsius, at the correct thermometer. temperature? Thermometer. Oh, we have to have a thermometer. Yes, thermometer. Because this is a live program, I cannot teach you the course, Of course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to be very professional. <laughs> so pour hot water inside. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Okay, pour water inside viewers and then make sure when you give hot bag, you mm. pour water and then put at the neck. But before you putting at the neck, make sure you get a small cloth, a small towel or cloth, put it around the neck. We don't want the heat to straight away contact with the skin because right. You don't know the temperature. The temperature could be very intense, which you are not aware. Mm -hmm. You follow my instruction and then it got burnt. That's in a big trouble already. So yeah. make sure you put a cloth to be safe. Then only you put hot back here. So when you put the hot water here, it yeah. won't actually burn your skin. And All right. many people, they might have hypersensitivity and hyposensitivity of skin mm -hmm. because of some conditions. But yeah. Uh, to play safe, that is the best thing. Put a towel and then just put. So how long to put? 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. If it's too hot, you've got to move it. You don't leave it until it cook. <laughs> okay. Okay. So make sure you don't right. move it. 
and then two ten, two ten to fifteen minutes will be just nice. Why? Because when your muscles are tired two times, you need more circulation to the area, make it yeah. more firm, more supple. So after giving hot pack and then you do your stretching, it will be more effective. Okay. Right, buddy. So your muscles will be more permeable. It will be easy for you to do your stretching. So it will help you so much. And then after the stretching also, if you are running, please give a gain or pack. That will help because our target is to reduce the pain. Okay. So the use pain. the hot pack first, and then you do the stretching. Yeah. Then after that, if you want, you can give hot pack. Very nice. Hot pack. We have. Do you have at any time at all, do you need um, a cold pack or it's always a hot pack? Okay, normally for condition like acute, I have very intense pain and all that. For two days maximum, you can give ice. Put ice cube inside and then you apply. <coughs> that will help. Okay, all right. Otherwise, you Maybe can straight away go to hot pack. But initial stage, as I told you, I'm not doing the assessment on you particularly, one particular person. This is a general talk. So if you think you need ice, it's too warm and all that, don't intentionally go and put hot pack. You shouldn't do that. You must give ice pack first. After two days, if the pain doesn't subside, kindly go and consult your doctor, see what's happening inside there on your neck. Okay, but initially it's fine for two days to give you to give cold. Then hot pack is mandatory. You can give hot pack. Okay, and then followed by <coughs> hot pack stretching. After that, you can even do simple massage for your own self. Use your two hand, press. Okay, picky press shoulder. Ah, you can just massage your shoulder. Old self shoulder, you can just massage. Yeah, and then at the neck. That's very soft, okay. All right. Yeah, that's very easy. If you have a partner, you can ask someone to just massage you. It shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so that is how you can bring down the pain management. Uh, this is the pain management for you to do at home. And then <laughs> if you have a soft collar, this is a soft collar. Okay, so you can apply soft collar for two, two to three days. So this will help to reduce the movement of the neck and it will also help to reduce the pain. So you use this uh, throughout the two to three days without removing it? Okay, you only remove this whenever you feel you have to remove. But you can use this more like in a day, four hours, five hours, or you, when you're seated in PC, you can just wear this and then you do. So this will actually help to Keep your neck aligned. So it will promote you from, from slouching, uh, protruding, forward and all that. So how this can one tell, Okay, sorry. How can one tell whether they need this uh, neck braces? What do you call it? A neck, neck support, yeah? This is soft collar. Neck soft, soft collar. Soft collar. Okay. Yeah. So okay, um, how would anyone be able to tell whether they need a soft collar? Um, you know, at, at which point? of the extent of the pain, do they need something okay. like this? When, uh, if, if viewers, you would have seen my previous video, I have actually explained to you about uh, visual analog scale, meaning there is a scale we use, zero, no pain, one little bit of pain, three, increase, four, up to 10, 10 is very severe. So if the pain is within five, you can use this, more than five also, you can use this. But normally patient, one to four, they try not to use this. They find it, I'm, I'm okay, it's just a little bit of pain. So I don't want to use, they will say that. But those who are more than four, five, six, seven, eight, they prefer to use this. They feel good when they use this because it, um, it braces their neck. So it embraces the neck, so they feel good. The movements are limited. So they find it good. So you can take from there actually the point. Okay, all right, that answers my right. question. Another point, um, sorry, Sega, you know uh, what you mentioned just now about massaging your own neck? I think uh -huh. sometimes people, uh, they also like to use their the arms, you know where the elbow mm -hmm. is, and they like to press the elbows against the, the shoulders or the upper part of the shoulders. 
is that one of the things that can help as well your neck pain ah uh, yes uh, i think what you are trying to say is more like the acupressure it's a method and then we even the physiotherapy is with a trigger point release we will find the knots and then we will release the particular fiber which is being knot so this knot has to be released this one only the professionals they will do uh, but when it comes to like uh, commoners people the best is actually just use your hand to massage or someone to just uh, press 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 with be that is fine but do not play with the cervical spine vertebra around the neck region here is quite sensitive it is very fine for you to play with these muscles here here the side and then the back muscle the big muscle but not at the neck region the neck region i will never advise anyone to do unless if a person is a professional they are well well versed with the spine is fine okay but right at the back because that one point uh, usually you know like when you are in a family setting and sometimes it's okay ask your son to massage for you that happens kan so here is okay but you were mentioning don't touch the neck area at all or it's okay yeah. for them to you know squeeze this it's part of the spine actually but i, I noticed that there's um this is also where you get someone casually uh, massaging it is that fine yeah there that mm -hmm. area to play here it is little risky but oh. if you are in a professional hand and a good hands it's fine they, when they know the anatomy of that muscles mm -hmm. and then for you to play like this is fine but since you are saying about your son your son must be very young boy he won't have that amount of pressure to go and forcefully push that yeah. bone it should be he must have a tendency like, as an example not not particularly my son i mean just anyone because i know that this um when you are somebody and this person is not a professional he or she is not an expert but you ask them okay oh, you please massage my my shoulders that's fine because shoulder is okay kan like what you showed just now right. but sometimes right. you feel alarm oh, my neck sakit lah can you please help me and what that person does because he or she is not trained and then they you know it is part of the spine as well so you're saying that do not let anyone touch your neck agree your neck and your back your lower back don't allow anyone to touch except doctors and physiotherapists really <laughs> yeah okay yes yes this can be to the professional you are asking for trouble basically yeah <laughs> i also have some cases uh, uh, fathers will ask their children to step on the back lah yeah this is you know like very, um, very okay. dangerous actually okay, okay. in the view in the eye of a professional you is, is mm. dangerous yeah okay. all right okay. so contact cervical collar soft collar is something very important for you to grab on to keep it in your house it will be very useful and another point which i wanted to share please buy a uh, heat wrap heat wrap cream oh heat i see a heat wrap okay hmm. heat wrap is very easy if you can't get water liquid heat you can just use that and put it around even though it's little superficial but it will help it has some anesthetic in that so it reduces your pain okay anything else that you would like to show us through demonstrations um so far this is a very basic thing which anyone okay, can practice that's good. that's good that's good yeah and they cool. they look very yeah. easy to do so okay so so we done to everyone uh yeah. viewers again please listen properly what i say it's very important uh whatever i say uh don't blindly follow because certain things as i told you please be careful know yourself first if you've been diagnosed with some other condition neurological don't try this and then you make it worse or and so on don't blame me this is for people with simple pain okay yeah all right simple neck pain you can manage yourself like this it's very safe yeah i i must say that the most significant take away from this session is uh what you mentioned just now about not letting untrained people touch you know the the back or the the neck because this is something that's so common i think in most most houses they always ask somebody to crack their backs lah you know like a picit sekejap tengkuk lah so this is very very common mm, i don't think i need to uh, tell you that lah because you know, happens in almost every home with the family of yeah that's, that's new that's new uh, should we take some questions sorry what is very dangerous because you have all the nerve roots coming out here forming mm. it exits from your cervical spine 
on the yeah. ankle it will come out yeah. and it forms it forms a plexus so all these has nerves very mm. important. if you wrongly mandle that that's it of course of course is there like yeah. a switch off button i i remember somebody telling me this i don't know maybe a kung fu a kung fu technique whereby there's supposed to be like some kind of nerve lah that you can switch off and the you know and that's the end of everything yeah martial art ah huh? possible to so, uh, yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> uh, an on and off button yeah <laughs> okay anyway i'm moving on to questions can we take questions now from our listeners viewers viewers listeners pula viewers okay now okay, thank you so much uh, miss vicky Yeah, thank you. Thank Kim. you very much. Thanks a lot, Vicky. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. It's kind enough to come in company today. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we've got uh, everyone saying thank you, great job, noted sir. And then we've got Miss uh, Rubni Tayaniti who says Chandra Sega treated my cervical disc problem. Oh, and he's very knowledgeable and helpful. Keep it up, Sega. Good job. Thank you, Rubni. Appreciate you. Miss Cecilia Chong is also asking, can sleeping on a, a pillow that's too flat or too high cause neck pain? This is a great question. Yeah, hi Cecilia Chong. Okay, well Cecilia, uh, sleeping in a very high pillow and low pillow, it solely depends on your neck size and the width of your neck. If your width of the neck, there is certain formula, you can just Google, you can read. Uh, that will answer more better than me because you have to try your pillow. You put it aside and you see whether it's comfortable or not. If it's not comfortable, it's too high. You got to change it. So for you to find that, normally you can use a, a towel, roll the towel, and then you try to fix it at the side of you. So and then you see whether that that height of that uh, towel really gives you comfort or not. If it's not comfortable. Then you get to reduce, and then you you measure that, and then you find a pillow according to that height. This is what I understood yeah. on managing cases, and then they were they benefited. Yeah. What do you think of uh, memory pillows? I think now there's such thing as a memory pillow, whereby when you sleep, and then it takes on the shape of your neck and the back of your head, mm -hmm. and then yeah. you can, you can bring yourself much achuan agak agak achuan you put your head back there. Have yeah. you seen any one of those? Okay, this uh, nowadays <laughs> pillows became very sensational because everyone designing pillow uh, mm. with so many type of material inside that. Yeah, But yeah. Shapes. End of the day, no no matter how expensive pillow you buy, mm -hmm. you got to try that. If it's good on you, it's good. I cannot say A person bought this pillow, B person will benefit from A person's pillow. It will never happen like that. Every individual, we have a different way of sleeping and usage of a pillow. Some people they don't even use pillow, and then the polymer, yeah. uh, polymer the the designer pillow you are mentioning, the memory pillow, mm. that is more like small small polymer they put inside, and then it become like achuan, like what you said, madam. Mm -hmm. So that achuan, if you find it good, and then it's good for you. Okay. Uh, I cannot really elaborate on this because individual yeah. is very difficult to satisfy. This yeah, is yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even comfort is uh, comfort is also subjective because some people they do prefer high pillow and it may not be good for the neck, but they feel that it's okay. So if it's between a too flat pillow and too high pillow, which is more damaging? Ah, uh, always the high because mm -hmm. when it's too high, it's going to stretch your neck. Right, right. So okay. This is not good. We just spoke about why happened, yeah. why happening. Yeah. So one of it is elongation of the muscle, which the muscle supposed to be in certain length, and then it has to be flexible. But too much of stretching, and then constantly for eight hours of sleep, you wake up. That's it. The neck will be fixed like that. How about if you sleep without a pillow, flat? Okay, there are people who prefer to sleep without pillow, and then they find it is really good, awesome. They say. Oh, I see. Okay, 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 all right. I don't know. Maybe we Your should opinion? try. <laughs> Okay, all right. So just don't use a uh, pillow that's too high, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. I hope you're you're enjoying this, ladies and gentlemen, because this is certainly very stimulating. This all this new information. Okay, um, Miss Ham Sawani Subramaniam, extremely well explained. Thank you for teaching us on these stretches during this work from home period. Very helpful. Fantastic. Very good. Okay, Thank there's another know. question. 
by Mr. Kalaimanan, if let's say after you do all these exercises, but you still have your neck pain and numbness, um, what is the best treatment for that? Okay, Kalaimanan, hi. You need to go and see an orthopedician. You know why? Because if even after this uh, very basic stretching, you still have persistent pain and numbness. Numbness, there's already a compression somewhere around your, I don't know which part of your side is being compressed. You got to go and meet an orthopedician. We have very good orthopedician here in Stapa. Please come over and then get yourself treated. Uh, let them rule out. They have to do an investigation, MRI, some special tests and all that. And then uh, they will rule out and they'll let you know exactly where's the compression. So numbness is not a good thing, Kalemanan. You've got to go mm. and meet an orthopedician. Fix your date, mark your date and meet the orthopedician. Okay. Right. So that's good advice. If, uh, we can take one last question here. It's again from Miss Cecilia Chong. Can muscle release from cracking, popping the neck? Uh, I'm assuming that this question is about, you know, people who like to go like, like that. <laughs> you, you do see people... Who feel much like, it's only was hati, you know. It's like very very satisfying when they do that. Like you know, do like very takut lah this part on. So what do you think of that? Sometimes the noise they make so it bothers me. Yeah, correct. So this is again another subjective question, <laughs> very individual. <laughs> A lot of people they want some result, so they need that to hear the popping sound. Then yeah, they say, oh, wow, that's awesome. But ah, actually, they're not aware that. That popping sound is created when you move two of your spine rubs. We have a spine at the cervical there. And then when they rub each other, the vertebra, they rub each other. That's where the crack, crack sound comes in. And then they find it, it's very, very relieving a factor, I guess. And then... Okay, is it harmful? For me, absolutely do not do that. You know why? <laughs> After a certain point, you will end up with spondylosis. You will have what, damaged, what da damaged spine. Hmm. The disc will move because uh, see when you become when you do certain things, it will become a habit. So when you become right, habit, right. you tend to repeat that very frequently. Yes. So yes. That's when the cracking happens. This is very common when men we go to barber shop, they will actually crack your neck. Oh <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, I've seen that. Wow, that one really is scary, man. Very scary. And then very recently, there were a few articles also came out because it can cause certain damage to the nerve. Absolutely, it's true. So they are actually the 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 shop tell them not to do that. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much. That was Mr. Chandra Sega Gobi from Columbia Asia Hospital Stapa. If you've got any problems with your neck, you can always go and see him. He's the physiotherapist there. Uh, thank you again, Sega, and thank you everybody for your time today. I hope you have found this very informative and educational. Okay, all right, well, that's it then. Have a good evening. Bye. Thank you very much, Madam Sakina. Thanks for the lovely talk. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.